The manufactured saga surrounding Bernie Sanders and the Democratic establishment continues as Queen of the DNC Hillary Clinton has jumped into the fray. Very recently, Hillary Clinton came out and claimed Bernie Sanders has no friends in Congress, proving once and for all that the government that runs America is no better than high school. I mean, what's next? A food fight at the next Democratic debates? Who's going to get a, a, a wedgie on Capitol Hill? Uh, and, and are we going to find out who's really in the elusive Pen15 club? This comes at the tail end of the feud between Bernie and Warren, which ended with Warren losing poll numbers after she characteristically lied to get ahead. Warren Staffords claimed Bernie said that a woman can't win the presidency in America, a claim that was repeatedly proven false by Bernie's record and the fact that Elizabeth Warren is a known and pathological liar. Reminder, she lied about being Native, she lied about getting fired over her pregnancy, she lied about her plans for Medicare for All, and she's constantly lied about being a progressive. The former Republican is proving the former false the closer we get to the primary votes. With contenders like Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and Beto O'Rourke out of the race, the DNC is trying to prop up Warren to try to split the progressive votes from Bernie. But this plan has failed. The feud launched us back into the only thing the Democratic Party clings to, identity politics. The DNC pushed back with the Believe All Women campaign to say that Bernie is a woman-hating old white man whose socialism has made him bitter and full of rage. This is, there, there, there's literally no proof that what Elizabeth Warren's camp is saying is true. As it was pointed out by The Guardian, the term believe women was never supposed to mean believe everything that the woman says and don't bother to investigate their claims. The way the DNC is using the Me Too movement for compliance is, is, is for compliance, not critical thought and investigations. They also tried to push back against the facts by claiming that most of Bernie Sanders supporters were the angry white males in America. The Bernie bros were back, and this time they were incellier than before. Armed with Joker DVDs and dick pics, they were going to cyberstorm Warren and her campaign. It'd be eggplant emojis as far as the eye could see. Well, the problem with that is that it's completely false. A CNN poll reported that most of Bernie's supporters were either women or people from minority communities. And about 45% of all his supporters are women under the age of 45. This wasn't about calling out white male privilege. This was about siphoning his large, diverse base and convincing them to side with the corporate elites. Since all of that failed, Democratic establishment elites called on the metaphoric big guns who had an agenda to be in control of all of the literal big guns. Hillary, I should have won Clinton. In her most recent statements to The Hollywood Reporter, she came out and said these statements about Bernie Sanders. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to work with him. He's got nothing done. He's a career politician. It's all baloney, and it's sad people got sucked into it. I feel like that's a very accurate Hillary Clinton impression. Now, this can all be very confusing, because she claims that she's really talking about Bernie Sanders, but I think she's really talking about herself. Feels like a lot of projection going on here. Bernie Sanders got a record-breaking 5 million donations. So her claim that nobody likes him is basically full of shit. Washington insiders and profit-driven politicians suckling at the teats of corporate lobbyists don't like him, but real Americans absolutely do. And I think through the transit of property, Hillary Clinton just called the American people a bunch of nobodies. Hmm. 
If that's what she thinks of the American people, I wonder if that has anything to do with why she lost. The answer to that question is yes. Yes, it does. And her lies continue. That's particularly true with what's going on right now with the Bernie campaign having gone after Elizabeth Warren with a very personal attack on her. This the, then the th- argument about whether or not he it did or didn't say that a wooden couldn't be elected, it's part of a pattern. If it were a one-off, you might say, okay, fine. But he said, I was unqualified. I have more experience than he did and got a lot more done uh, than he had. But that was his attack on me. Firstly, uh, Warren personally attacked Sanders by lying about him. Then she sullied the hashtag MeToo movement by disrespecting it by using the Believe All Women hashtag for political gains. Using facts to defend yourself from blatant lies isn't a personal attack. And Hillary Clinton is unqualified to be president. She is a warmongering corporatist that would have sold the American working class down the river to make herself and her criminal party richer. The president of America isn't supposed to be the global corporate police chief, although patterns would dictate otherwise. Leaders don't just prop up the elite class and engage in more warfare. They lead people into a better, more progressive future without leaving people behind. Now, there is another reason why she's coming out uh, smearing Bernie, and this has to do with uh, similar reasons to when she came out and smeared Tulsi Gabbard back in October 2019. Hillary Clinton has a new documentary coming out on Hulu about her life and losing the bid to become president of the United States. This is an egotistical attack to push her garbage. Just like the attack on Tulsi Gabbard was all about selling her book, this is about increasing the visibility for her propagandistic documentary that will ensure that she doesn't take any personal responsibility for her own loss in 2016. Her book did the same thing. Well, I mean, what, what was that book called again? The Shilling of the Shilliest Mother Schiller, the Shillery Clinton story. Hillary Clinton is part of the establishment elites that want to so desperately be relevant in our society again. It's the same reason why the New York Times endorsed both Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren. The New York Times is desperately trying to be relevant after they've been debunked about their biased propaganda by playing into identity. So irrelevant with their extravagance. And the American working class includes white men and women, immigrants, black communities, the LGBT communities, and so many other identities the establishment pays lip service to and does nothing for. The only way they can stay in the conversation is by creating gargantuan lies and spin a web to entangle all of us in it. Lest we forget that the Democrats and Republicans are complicit in another war in the Middle East that will be perpetuated by ex-CIA goons based on more lies fed to us by the greed-driven war hawks. And they also have their media proxies to reinforce their lies on a consistent basis. Claire McCaskill went on MSNBC and had a horrifically awkward interview where she had to spin her wheels to stay cuntily neutral on this situation. McCaskill pointed out that Bernie doesn't socialize much, probably because he was doing his job as a representative of the people and was trying to push for progressive legislation while a while, uh, a, a, a majority of the other senators were, were getting a facial of corporate lobbyist gifts and bribes. I mean, that's what it means to be a career politician, that you go in and figure out how to use legislation to make people's lives better instead of enriching yourselves on the American people's dimes, hopes, and dreams. She goes on to say that Bernie stayed on his moral superiority throughout his time in Congress. Where's the proof? The guy that marched with Martin Luther King Jr. and is very humble about it is on a moral superior high horse? 
Do you know what I would do? If I fucking marched with Martin Luther King Jr., I would make t-shirts and wear it every day. That's the only t-shirt I would ever have. I would have multiples of the t-shirt that says, I marched with Martin Luther King. And then on the back of it would be a, a just a full picture of me marching with Martin Luther King Jr. And I would go to bars every single night and, and just stare people down and be like, huh? Huh? Fucking civil rights hero right here. Huh? Huh? I mean, this guy is humble. Humble enough not to constantly do that. I mean, there is proof that Hillary and her cronies think that they're better than everyone. She carries herself like she's owed the presidency. She's writing books and doing documentaries about her failed campaign and then smearing the more popular candidates to become relevant and gain traction for her projects that nobody gives a shit about. I bet even Bill didn't read her book. Ms. Ca McCaskill continues by saying Bernie gave lectures while everyone was trying to give blowjobs to corporations as if they were a Clinton intern in the 90s. While mainstream Congress people were too busy being the legislative wing of the corporatocracy, Bernie was trying to help the American middle class. McCaskill also says Bernie is very absolute in his idea. Yeah, well, who the fuck isn't? Right? Have you ever tried to change somebody's mind? That's usually why every holiday ends with one family member telling another to go fuck themselves over a piece of pumpkin pie. And it has to be a pumpkin pie, not an apple pie. Okay, if Americans argue over a piece of apple pie, it is considered treason. The only thing you're allowed to do over apple pie is watch baseball and pretend that the empire is doing great. The difference between the ca candidates like Bernie and Tulsi is that they are absolute in their ideas for the people and their anti-war stances. Hillary, Biden, Warren, Obama, and of the like are absolute in grasping their positions of power and ensuring they keep their elite status fucking over the working class in order to do so. The biggest attack on Bernie by Claire McCaskill on MSNBC was to say that Bernie is angry. She claims that he comes from, it all comes from passion, but it's still fury. I mean, she might as well have said, hell hath no fury like a septuagenarian democratic socialist. There are more pictures of Bernie smiling and hugging people than almost any other candidate. When he isn't smiling, it's because he's going after the bullshittery of Congress and their corruption. And he's not really going to hug most people in Congress because they might literally stab him in the back at this point. Hillary has two photos of herself smiling. One haunts everyone dreams and it looks like she just discovered what smiling is and this is how humans do it. It looks like a Terminator robot put on like a bad meat mask and tried to smile to calm its victims down. The other is when she cackled over the death of Gaddafi. The big shill, a.k.a. Hillary Clinton, was asked whether she'd support Bernie Sanders if he wins the nomination. Her response, I'm not going to go there yet. We're still in a vigorous primary season. I will say, however, that it's not only him, it's the culture around him of a scheme stereotypical witch over a cauldron to ensure that Bernie doesn't win. But here's the truth. The Bernie bros aren't really attacking Bernie's competitors. Bernie's supporters of all races, creeds, gender, and sexual orientation are using facts to debunk lies in an attempt to steamroll his campaign. That's not called attacking. That's called having a functioning brain that remembers history. As an award-winning journalist Aaron Maté points out, the Democrats care more about protecting their own pride and privilege. If they want to beat Trump, transform the party, and speak about grievances, and, and talk about taking on Wall Street and militarism. There have only been more excuses like Russiagate, Ukraine Gate, burning to, bur, burning, blame, blaming Bernie and Tulsi and more. Bit of a tongue twister there. But that's what they've done. They, they put their blame on everybody else. It's, it's Bernie Sanders' fault. It's Russia's fault. Tulsi's fault. And now Hillary Clinton is going back and doing the exact same thing she did back in 2016 that cost her a bunch of votes is by, is by name-calling her opposition supporters. The Bernie bros, the incels, the angry white male. This is the same thing she did with, with Trump supporters when she called them deplorables. It's just a, it's just a new skin on the same old tactic. 
My one complaint with Bernie is his passiveness against the Democratic establishment elites. Recently, he had to apologize to Joe Biden about writing facts about him. The truth doesn't care about your feelings, and that includes Joe, the, Joe Biden's, okay? The, the three that he remembers he has, you know, anger, condescension, and, um, oh, uh, shit. He just forgot the third one, you guys. He just forgot the third one. But that's what the elites do. They want you to apologize to them for calling them corrupt for their corrupt actions and behaviors, When the truth is exposed, they throw a temper tantrum like a spoiled 16-year-old that wants an expensive car that will bankrupt their family for the sake of status. I wish Bernie would go on the offensive like Tulsi did back in October. It not only boosted her profile, but it forced a retreat of Hillary and her proxies. So let's take a look at what a Bernie Sanders presidency would look like and why these elites are so damn afraid of it. Since 2016, some of the more fringe ideologies like Medicare for All, funding public education, a Green New Deal, stronger unions have all become mainstream talking points. The corporate candidates and their media proxies talk about it all the time, but they still talk about it like it's a pipe dream. But the American people aren't falling for it anymore. Bernie Sanders has rallied and energized the American people to fight for what they truly want. And that's the strength behind Bernie's campaign, organization. As he said many times, not me, us. And he's claimed that he'd be an organizer in chief. Bernie's campaign mixed with the exposed wound that is the Trump administration sparked people to start paying attention and getting involved in politics in some manner. It's the reason why you have more diversity in Congress, not just in identity, but also in ideology. It's the reason why we have a few more Congress people that are willing to stand up for the American working class. The, that strength and organization is the answer to the, to the counter to a, a Bernie Sanders presidency would face from a corporate Congress. He sparked a movement that has started to shift the dynamic of power and his presidency would continue that momentum forward. What people see in a Bernie Sanders campaign is real freedom. The freedom to live your life the way you want to without being burdened with the debt from an illness or an education or childcare. Neoliberal economic policies that have been guided by the invisible hand of the free market has dictated that only the rich can better the lives of the poor. Look how far that's gotten us. We have record income inequality, the climate is fucked, and Terminator robots are wearing skin masks and writing books and making documentaries about themselves. In a Bernie Sanders presidency, the poor won't be working for the rich, but rather be equal partners in what they create. We'd all be responsible to each other and work together to find purpose in our lives on our own accord, instead of being told what our purpose is by some out-of-touch, gilded gremlin ruling from a dark tower. The idea of worker-owned co-ops and employees owning shares in a company would mean that if a CEO is making 500 times that of an entry-level employee, they'd have to answer to why. And because they wanna isn't going to be a good enough excuse. It's probably going to result in the overthrow of your company and a bonfire made of all of your Prada bags. Being responsible to each other means that we're going to have to answer for the excess and greed that's been running this country since its conception. Unlimited freedom means inequality. What Bernie, a Bernie Sanders administration would bring is a balance to an unjust, unfair system that has rotted the core of a truly beautiful and democratic idea. Additionally, applying corporate taxes and ensuring that the uber-rich CEO pays their fair share would reduce the wealth gap in America. The tax system in America is flipped. There are loopholes for the rich to get richer, which makes the poor get poorer and then penalized for being poor. It should be that the rich pay their fair share in taxes to help with the necessary programs that would take care of all of us. Once again, This makes us all responsible for each other. Sure, uh, this would mean that less people are incentivized to become multi-billionaires and billionaires, but that should be a good thing. 
the people only people that would need a billion dollars right now is the american middle class but that would mostly be so that we could pay off all of our debts from a predatory system Sanders would revolutionize immigration by granting amnesty and creating a better pathway to citizenship for undocumented people in America. As a person that's gone through virtually every aspect of immigration in this country, I can confidently say that it needs improving, and, and, and that, is, that is me being very nice about it. It should have been improved over two decades ago. But if we did reform and restructure immigration to, to be easier and, and more compassionate, I mean, who would we scapegoat when the rich CEOs want to get richer by using slave labor in another country and uh, automation when that comes around? You know, uh, what are we, we going to blame the robots? Well, the robots are all Hillary Clinton now. huh? And, and, and if we've learned anything from this podcast, it's that you can't, you can't blame Hillary Clinton uh, because, uh, uh, you know, she's the blame dictator. She, di- she dictates who the blame should go to and who it shouldn't go to. And it's never going to be her because she is uh, the, the blame dictating automaton. Look, a Bernie Sanders presidency would be a mass disruption of the oligarchy that has plagued this country for a long time. It would disrupt the unequal flow of power and wealth. It would embolden the masses to speak up and stand together despite their identities. We've already seen it with the congressional nomination of progressives like AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Ro Khanna, and so many more. And it includes the rising popularity of Shahid Buttar, who is running against Nancy Pelosi. But, We've also seen the movement spread on the local levels into city council seats with socialist victories like Shama Savant in Seattle and Brandon Betts in Lansing. Burning has a lot of friends, and they're getting a lot stronger and a lot smarter every single day. This attack on Bernie Sanders is proof that the Democratic establishment elites are scared. Candidates like Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, and a few other real progressives in Congress are gaining traction. The propaganda is slowly starting to wear off. The Trump administration revealed that the status quo is a pretty face on horrific policies and crimes at the expense of the American people to make these greed goblins richer. If the DNC turns on Bernie Sanders in, 20, in the 2020 primaries, there won't be a resurgence of the Democratic Party. It'll be the start of a true political revolution with Bernie and his hundreds and millions of friends at the helm. I am going to be touring all across the country. Uh, if you want to check out my entire tour schedule, uh, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R A M A N noodlescomedy.com but January 29th I'm going to be at the 730 Tavern in Boston Massachusetts January 31st I'm at the Appohattian Theater in Portland Maine February 6th I'm at the Vermont Law School in South Royalton Vermont February 7th I'm at the Markey Theater in Middlebury Vermont February 8th I'm at the Revelry Theater in Burlington Vermont February 9th I'm at the Woolen Mills Comedy Club in Bridgewater Vermont February 10th, I'm at the Skinny Pancake in Burlington, Vermont. February 11th, I'm at the Boulder Coffee House in Rochester, New York. February 15th, I'm at the Third Street Gallery in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like I said, you can catch my entire tour schedule at ramennoodlescomedy.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I'm going to be touring all around the country Uh, working on Politely Angry for the first half of the year and then working on a new show after it's recorded uh, for the second half of the year, as well as touring with my good friend Lee Camp for his book release tour. Very honored to be a part of that. Um, But like I said, I am recording my album. Uh, I will be recording my album on March 20th at the Reliable Tavern in Washington, D.C., and March 21st at the Art House Project's in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I've also got dates lined up for the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival in Pittsburgh in the first week of April that I'm going to be recording my album. We are finalizing those dates and the venue information for that, so stay tuned. That will be coming out 
very soon. Uh, but another way that you can support this show is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, by becoming a patron, uh, not only are you a people sponsor of this show, but you get exclusive unreleased tracks that are not released to the public. They are early versions of some bits. They are bits that never make it onto a stand-up album, uh, storytelling sets, um, and you also uh, you also get uh, early access to some of the multi-part Forkful of Noodles that I uh, put out every single year as well. Uh, and it all starts at $2 a month, just 2 bucks a month, and you get all of this stuff, uh, and you get to support uh, a DIY, socially conscious, independent, anti-establishment podcast. Uh, so we are we are specifically sponsored by you guys. So go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, if you can and have the means to, uh, to donate. And uh, uh, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. And you, again, you can go to my website for all of the information on my tour dates, past episodes of this podcast, uh, videos, and so much more. RamanNoodlesComedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, NoodlesComedy.com. Thanks so much. <laughs>